Monsieur Foucault, Monsieur Foucault! In the wake of revelations regarding the brutality of the gulags in the USSR, many leftists have used your writings on the prison system to evade the problem of the gulag in socialist countries. Isn't it an inversion of your arguments to make the critique of internment serve as a neoliberal or neo-populist slogan? I am indeed worried by a certain use that is made of the gulag internment parallel. A certain use which consists in saying everyone has their own gulag. The gulag is air at our door, in our cities, our hospitals, our prisons. It's air in our heads. It sounds to moi that one must make a distinction between the gulag institution and the gulag question. Like all political technologies, the gulag institution has its history, its transformation, transpositions, its functions and effects, the internment practiced in the classical age formed in all likelihood a part of its archaeology. The gulag question, on the other hand, involves a political choice. There are those who pose it and those who don't. To pose it means far things. A. Refusant to question the gulag on the basis of the texts of Marx and Lenin, or to ask oneself how, through what error, deviation, misunderstanding, distortion of speculation or practice, their theory could have been betrayed to such a degree. Au contraire, it means questioning all these theoric texts, however old, on the standpoint of the reality of the gulag, rather than of searching in those texts for a condemnation in advance of the gulag, it is a matter of asking what in those texts could have made the gulag possible, what might even now continue to justify it, what makes its intolerable truth still accepted today. The gulag question must be posed not in terms of error, reduction of the problem to one of theory, but in terms of reality. P. Refusant to restrain one's questioning to the level of course. If one begins by asking for the cause of the gulag, Russia's retardy development, the transformation of the party into a bureaucracy, the specific economic difficulties of the USSR, one makes the gulag appear as a sort of disease or abscess, an infection, degeneration, involution. This is to think of the gulag only negatively as an obstacle to be removed, a dysfunctioning to be rectified, a maternity illness of the country which is painfully giving birth to socialism. The gulag question has to be posed in positive terms. The problem, of course, must not be dissociated from that of function. What who is the gula? What functions does it assure? In what strategies is it integrated? The gula should be analyzed as a politico economic operator in a socialist state. We must avoid all historic reductionism. The gulag is not a residue or a sequel of the past. It is a positive raison. C'est refusant to adapt for the critique of the gula a law or principe of selection internal to our own discourse or dream. By this I mean giving up the politics of inverted commas, not attempting to evade the problem by putting inverted commas, whether damning or ironic, around Soviet socialism in order to protect the good, true socialism with no inverted commas, which alone can provide a legitimate standpoint for a politically valid critique of the gulag. Actually, the only socialism which deserves the scornful scare quotes is the one which leads the dreamy life of ideality in our heads. We must open our eyes, on the contrary, to what enables people there, on the spot, to resist the gulag. What makes it intolerable for them and what can give the people of the anti-gulag the courage to stand up and die in order to be able to utter a word or a poem? We must discover what makes Mikhail Stern say, I will not give in. We must find out too how those almost illiterate men and women gathered together under what threats to accuse him found the strength to publicly exonerate him. We, we should listen to these people, not to our century or little love song for socialism. What is it that sustains them? What gives them energy? What is the force at work in their resistance? What makes them stand? and fight. And, above all, 
Let us not ask them if they are really still, in despite everything, communists, as if that were the condition for our consenting to listen to them. The leverage against the Gulag is not in our heads, but in their bodies, their energy, what they say, think and do. Ray, Rejutant, the universalizing dissolution of the problem into the denunciation of every possible form of internment. The Gulag is not a question to be posed for any and every country, it has to be posed for every socialist country. Insofar as none of these since 1917 have managed to function without a more or less developed gulag system. To sum up, it seems to me that we must insist on the specificity of the gulag question against all theoretical reductionisms, which makes the gulag an error already to be read in the text, against all historicist reductionisms, which makes the gulag a conjectural effect which can be isolated in terms of its cause, against all utopian dissociations, which would set it with pseudo-socialism in opposition to socialism itself, against all universalizing dissolutions into the general form of internment. These operations all serve the same role, and they are none too many for the accomplishment of so difficult a task to preserve the currency among us of a leftist discourse whose organizing principles remain unchanged.